no matter what you're going through, I want you to remember, especially when times are tough, the Lord says, he said to Israel, and he says to all believers in Jesus Christ today, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Let his love truly cover you. Let it cover you. Bask in his love. Sit there and think about how much he loves you. Because sometimes we say, you know, God loves me. Jesus loves me. Okay. But I don't think we can even understand the depths, the lengths. I have loved you with an everlasting love. He spoke this through my mouth, just Holy Spirit, as I was just doing things. And he just spoke it through my mouth. I remember the first time or several months ago. And I didn't, I admittedly didn't know the verse. You know, I didn't know it. And then, of course, I came to learn it because how beautiful. And just a few days ago, I was, I needed it. I needed to hear it. And I just spoke out, of, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And it's not just for me. You know, God doesn't have favorites. He's just pouring his love out for his people. Make sure that you receive that. Make sure, even if you have to ask him, Lord, help me receive your love. He is just pouring his love out. I had an experience, I think it was it was last Sunday at church. And, um, well, the night before church, I became suddenly distracted by the number 27. And, and that's not me. You know, I'm not a big signs person just because... I, I, if the Lord wants to speak to me, you know, there are many ways before I will look for signs in the enemy, especially for the elect, the elect, the chosen God's people, the enemy will send signs too. But nevertheless, I was really distracted by the number 27 as I was reading last Sunday before church. It sounds weird. I didn't even think to pray on it or anything. I just, all of a sudden I was reading on my phone. It was real late. And, um, and I remember because I, I it reminded me of the 27 Club, where if you know, uh, I'm formerly I was into conspiracies. So there's a whole thing about the 27 Club, which is irrelevant and unnecessary to get into, of course. But it made me. I looked up the number, the number stuck with me enough that I, I was sitting there like 27 and I just went to bed. So the next day at church, we had a guest speaker and the guest speaker, when he was finished speaking, he said, and we have a very big church, okay? And he said, it's recorded. I should have looked it up before I came on. Um, you know how the church is live stream. But he said, and the Lord says, the number 27, today is your day for breakthrough, something like that. And I nearly fell out my seat because I couldn't believe it, 27. And indeed, it was my day for breakthrough, but that's not what I'm sharing here. 27 so I did thereafter look it up in the Strong's Concordance and do you know that it means beloved or divinely loved ones now first and foremost this is referring to Jesus Christ we will we we recall this scripture Matthew 3, 17, and several other scriptures. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And additionally, like in the beginning of, of Jude 3, where he greets the people, Beloved, it means divinely loved ones, a plural, divinely loved ones. It's not just for me. And this is how the Lord is seeing you. This is how... He loves you, divinely loved ones. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Just know that. His love, just let it, just bask in it. Don't ever forget just to sit for a moment and feel his pouring out of love. Because those moments change you. Those moments overcome all thought and circumstance and reason and everything going on just sit for a moment and just feel how much he loves you we know he's loved us in past we know uh, the bible says he loves us and people say god loves you and we know jesus died he loved us while we were still sinners hallelujah but do you know that that love has never gone has never lessened 
the word in Greek actually is agapetos, and it's spelled just like that, agapetos, agape, agape love. We learn about the word agape in 1 John 4, 8, he that loves he that loves not doesn't know God, for God is love. God is love. His very persons, person, his presence, he is love. God is many things, isn't he? He is love. And I want you to experience that aspect of him he wants you to experience that aspect of him. He has many aspects, right? For a few months, we were talking about the Lord as a precious gemstone in our hands that has many angles. And as you turn it, you know, it's one gemstone, but it has so many different aspects, each angle, special, intricate, intricate and beautiful. Sorry, my... And this aspect of love needs to be at the first and foremost because you know what it's his love that keeps us going sorry i just wanted to look up the actual verse so it's jeremiah 31 and 3 and of course he's talking about israel but this of course replies to all that he has received today through the blood of christ jesus he says i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with unfailing kindness. So earlier when we had our prayer session today, we looked up what that means, uh, drawn you, and it means leads you. He's, he'll lead you on with his unfailing kindness. I mean, truly, knowing that this walk can be, you know, it's difficult to do in a fallen world. It's difficult to be holy in a fallen world. But he loves you with this everlasting, all-encompassing love. And then he draws you. He leads you. He leads you with his unfailing kindness. I mean, this is what keeps us going. This is what needs to keep us going. Not blessings, not things, not the future, not the past, nothing but his love. Holy Spirit had me look up the word everlasting. And it refers to the past and the future. It spans all time. That is the love with which the Lord loves you ancient time long time of past and a future forever always continuous perpetual indefinite eternal this is how the lord loves you houston's really active tonight i don't think i've heard this many sirens since i lived in hartford connecticut <laughs> hallelujah this is how the lord loves you has always loved you, does love you, will always love you. Please, of all aspects, receive his love. Even if you need to pray, Lord, help me receive your love, which I had to pray myself for several years because if you're someone who's experienced lots of shame or self issues, it can be hard to receive something that's so good, so good. And yet you must, you just must. You can put everything down. You can put your struggles down, your your sin cycles, your worries, your blessings, your waiting on blessings, situations, jobs, families, mothers, fathers, children. Put everything down for a moment. Put everything aside. It's nothing but you and him. And receive his love and watch it like gasoline fill you, cover you. This is the overflowing love that covers a multitude of sins, the love that will break chains. This is the love of Jesus Christ that died for you upon the cross. Feel his love for you so that you can lead with it. I think, you know, as I'm speaking, we don't do this enough. We're not doing this enough. And you would find many areas of your life cleared up, straightened up, cleaned up, fixed up, received um, many areas of your life changed. If you would just receive the love of the Lord, there's an actual manifestation property of that the Lord, the love of the Lord will produce in your life as you just receive his love. And isn't that just like him to give us something for nothing? And now we know the Lord feeds the hungry. You know, there's sacrifice required on this walk. We can't come before him lukewarm, you know, in this fake posturing place of whatever. But is your father always willing 
to just dote on you, to give to you always, always. You are his beloved. He has loved you with an everlasting love. Receive the love of the Lord. And if you can say like, I don't think I've ever received it, pray right this minute, put everything else aside. Nothing else matters. Lord Jesus, help me receive your love. Hallelujah.